All right, so this video is going to be about getting started with the Usebox video game console. And uh, what is the Usebox? It's an open source hardware, open source software video game console based on an 8 bit 80 mega 644, which has 4K of RAM and 64K of flash that you can build yourself from a kit, or you can completely build it from scratch based on the provided schematics if you want to. The easiest thing to do, though, is uh, probably just to build it from a kit and uh, you can follow the link from their page to Adafruit where they have this kit. Uh, I bought one, it took me a couple hours to solder it together. Um, it uses Super Nintendo controllers which you can get pretty cheap online. Um, all the games are stored on, a, on an SD card that you can just pop in and the bootloader on the chip knows how to reflash itself from a game on the SD card. So you can store a whole bunch of different games on there and pick and choose when you turn it on. Um, there's a US version that works with NTSC and then there's a European version that um, doesn't have the uh, RGB to NTSC converter chip on there. It just outputs directly to um, the SCART interface. And um, you don't actually need the kit or you don't actually need the hardware in order to start programming for it. Um, this video is going to talk about how to get a development environment set up for it and I found it's easiest on Linux um, just because you don't have to go to all different websites and download software. So um, this is going to assume that you're using Debian which you can get by going to debian.org and I'm just going to be using the live CD, so it doesn't actually require you to install it on a hard drive. So if you're not already running Linux, if you're running, say, Windows, um, you can download the, the live CD DVD and burn it onto a DVD or put it on a USB stick, boot your computer from it, and um, it won't make any changes to your hard drive as long as you don't choose install at the menu. If you just choose live at the boot menu, any changes you make, you can install software on there. It's all, it's all happening inside your computer's RAM. So when you shut it off, it all goes away and it's back to whatever your computer was before. So it's a, a nice way to test things out without worrying about messing it up. Or if you, you know, if you type the wrong command in there, it doesn't matter. You can just reboot your computer, start it over again. So if you navigate here, um, I recommend the Debian Live 860 uh, AMD 64 GNOME desktop. AMD 64 is just the name for 64-bit. If you have an Intel chip, as long as it's, you know, within the past 10 years, it should support that. So just download this ISO, burn it to a DVD, um, pop it in your computer, and poof, you're, you're running Linux. So this is what you'll see when you first put up Debian. To get started, we're going to install the AVR compiler, tools, libraries, a C++ compiler, Git, and the SDL2 dev library in order to build the emulators. There are other Usebox related tools that we can build later once we get the basics down. Oh, and before I get too far into things, if you walk away from the computer for too long, you'll come back to a locked screen and you won't know the password. The password for the Debian Live image is LIVE, L-I-V-E, all lowercase. So the first thing we want to do is open a terminal, and you can do this either by moving your mouse at the top left corner of the screen or pressing the Windows key on your keyboard and start typing terminal. Then we're going to grab the updated list of packages that are available for installing by typing sudo apt-get update. <clears throat> then we're going to install the software I just mentioned by typing sudo apt-get install and then GCC AVR, bin utils AVR, AVR libc, AVR dude, you could tab complete things, um, G++, git, sebastiel2-dev. Press enter, and I'll put these commands uh, in the description of the video as well, and then hit enter or Y for yes and wait for it to download. And then once it downloads, it unpacks it and installs it, configures it. Much easier than installing a bunch of different stuff on Windows where you have to go to websites and 
figure out how to install everything. Um, you can just do everything all at once. Then we're going to want to clone the main Usebox Git repository by typing git clone https github.com slash usebox slash usebox.git and this is going to download everything from the official repo and it creates a directory called usebox so you can change that directory and we can look at what's in there and for now uh, we can just type make and since we've already installed all the stuff um, it, it build the emulator a whole bunch of tools and a whole bunch of demos and games so depending on how fast your computer is this could take you know a little while or a longer time so at this point all the tools demos some of the games have been built along with the uh, usebox emulator so you can test your creations immediately without having to juggle SD cards back and forth between your computer and the actual hardware. So at this point we could take a look at what's been built. Uh, we now have a bin directory and a ROMs directory. And in the bin directory we have a bunch of tools and the one that we're going to be looking at first is Usum, which is the uh, emulator. So we can change to the ROMs directory and we see there's a bunch of things. Now there's, you'll see there's hex files and use files. So the hex files are what you can flash directly to the microcontroller and the use files is what get put on the SD card and that's what the bootloader can load. It can only load use files. Uh, they're smaller. It's basically just a compressed hex file with a header stuck on there. So um, we can run the emulator and uh, Take a look at the demo. So, some of the things it could do. Um, another demo. Load runner. So, this is just the classic load runner that's been ported to tons of different systems so escape will quit the emulator so now I want to show you one of the games that I wrote um, so the typical directory structure is uh, you have a sibling directory to the kernel called my games so make it switch to it and uh, We'll get clone bugs dot get. So this will get the game that I wrote and switch the directory. And uh, <clears throat> in order to build it, I require XCF tools. So just installed that and um, so the usual directory structure is you have a data directory and uh, that's where all your images and include files like sounds and stuff is and then uh, you have a default directory so inside the default directory is the make file um, and there was a bunch of uh, levels that I created for this game and uh, I ended up making my own level editor and I wanted a quick cycle between changing the levels and playing it in the emulator so I wrote a little script that um, actually goes through and takes all of the graphic files converts them to include files which the game then includes rebuilds itself and runs it and then it automatically runs the emulator full screen so I had a really short um, like design test redesign cycle so um, so if we run this then immediately it starts into the game so we can play it and see it's a little platformer 
So and then escape quits out of it. And uh, so that's just one of the examples of something that I was able to make with it. Um, and I had never coded for the use box before. So apparently when I'm uh, recording the screen, a full screen game that switches the resolution doesn't look correct, but it really shows it full screen uh, when I'm not screen recording. So one of the other things I want to show you is there's a di uh, an additional emulator that doesn't yet have feature parity to use them, but um, it has some other unique features and it's much faster. Um, so we'll go back to the base directory and uh, we'll, we'll put in the tools directory. Um, get clone HTTPS github.com slash jubation box.kit and it's done. Change the directory and this one's written in C. It's based on usum. It just has a lot more uh, things cleaned up in there. So make, build it, and now it's built. So uh, we can we can go back to the directory with bugs. Um, And uh, tools. and you can see this has a, a bug display on the bottom that shows the registers and the memory as it's changing. So you can, it's really helpful to see, you know, like you know what the high water mark is for the memory of your game. Um, it's pretty cool, and it has the nice little scan line things here. Um, if you want it to have the same uh, keyboard shortcuts as use them, um, hit F8 to switch the keys to use them. Um, a is A, and S is B. Um, enter is start, tab is select, the left shift is the left shoulder, and right shift is the right shoulder and X and Z are X and Y. Um, so you can just see, um, and in this game, if you want to like cheat and skip levels, you can hold down uh, select and use the shoulder button. So we already played the first level a bit. We'll play the second level. That's that. Um, the sounds don't always play the exact same frequency, so sometimes you'll hear a slightly different pitch with this emulator, um, but it can keep up with the frame rates pretty good. Um, it can, if you have low-powered hardware, this will definitely work better. Uh, both emulators were ported to run um, in the web browser, um, like compiled with MScript, which is a JavaScript compiler. Um, Usum does not run well. Um, the Qsbox emulator runs very well. Um, it actually runs at 60 frames a second inside Firefox. Um, Chrome might have some issues. You probably need a really fast computer for it to run well in Chrome. Um, but this is just another tool that you can use when developing. Um, this one has little blue lines on the edges of the screen that can show you if you're if you're writing a new video mode. So all the all the video modes are generated in software. Um, so there's actually software running on the AVR that's outputting every single pixel you see on the screen. Um, that's typically part of the kernel, um, or it is part of the kernel. And uh, the games that you write, you can write them all in like high level C. Um, but you can also write your own video modes, which some people have done. So there's vector modes. There's there's a lot of different video modes that you can do as people come up with more creative ways to use the AVR hardware. Um, so if you're writing a video mode, uh, the Qsbox emulator can show you if you're um, like missing your H sync for for the lines and stuff like that. So um, F3 toggles the um, 
the debug display off at the bottom. Um, if you have a really low powered computer, F2 will switch the display to um, lower resolution. Um, the window doesn't quite refresh and redraw when you resize it for that, but um, F4 uh, takes the frame limiter away, so you can see that it's running way faster. But if you hit F4 twice, then um, it destroys and recreates the window, so things will be at the proper size. Um, you can also compile it um, with support for recording videos. Um, same thing with Usum, that already has support for recording videos. Um, Usum supports GDB, so you can actually debug inside the program that's running inside the emulator, which is kind of cool. Um, the Qsbox emulator doesn't have that yet, but uh, I think that's a planned feature. So um, yeah, those are some of the tools. It's pretty cool.